Hello, boys and girls. I'm Amos Hastings, and this is the history of Frank Kravitz, an ordinary boy who grew up to do great things. I'll see you again in just a while. Hello, young folks. My name is Frank Kravitz, and for as long as I can remember, I've loved airplanes. Even when I was a boy, I'd stop my plane to watch them fly over our house. I'd build airplanes from balsa wood powered by a rubber band. It was so much fun to wind them up and let them go, to watch them sail from the porch and rise higher and higher. I want to fly in an airplane when I grow up, I told my mother one day. Put your plane away, Frank, she said. It's time to go to church. I didn't argue. Church was important to my family. It was important to me, too. Now, our neighborhood was a happy place, but there was trouble in the world. Some countries wanted to tell people what to do and when to do it, and Germany was one of those countries. The Nazis, led by an evil man named Adolf Hitler, ruled Germany. The Nazis didn't care for the United States, where everyone was free. And they didn't care much for God, either. They wanted to rule the world. In 1939, Germany attacked Poland, and World War II began. Then, in 1941, the United States joined the war. And I wanted to fight for my country, but I was too young. I'd have to wait. And it was while I waited that I met Anne. Oh, was she pretty. My heart fluttered every time I looked at her. And Anne's heart fluttered too, I think. We began to spend a lot of time together, going to picnics and movies and parties. Oh, and baseball games. And I was awful happy to have a girlfriend like Anne. Then one day I got a letter. It said I was old enough now that I could join the U.S. Army Air Force and help win the war. I was sad to leave Anne and my family, but I was awfully excited to fly and serve my country. The Army sent me to a base in North Carolina for training. I'll never forget my first training flight, the thrill of soaring far above the earth in clouds, just like I dreamed. When I'd finished my training, I was shipped to an air base in England. I'd be flying in a B-17 bomber with a bunch of other men. And there was Ken, he was the pilot, and Bill, and George, and Ed, and Harry, and Virgil, and Herb, and Steve, and Tom, and John. The B-17 was a big, tough, four-engine plane that dropped bombs on the enemy. It didn't just drop bombs, though. No, sir. A B-17 needed to protect itself, too, or German planes would shoot it down. And for protection, B-17s had so many guns, people called it the Flying Fortress. One of those guns would be my responsibility. It was a dangerous job. On November 2, 1944, our plane was ordered to fly deep into Germany and drop bombs on factories. I was terribly scared. Everyone was scared, if they had sense. We knew some planes wouldn't return, and that some men would die. Help me to do my duty, I prayed to God. I don't want to die, but your will be done. But before I could board the B-17, I had to dress. The plane would fly high into the sky, where the temperature could be 50 degrees below zero, and I'd need to wear a lot of clothes. First, I put on a flying suit, and over that, I would wear a t-shirt, and then a button jacket, then a flight jacket. I still wasn't done. Over all the other clothes, I had to wear a life jacket, and a hat, and goggles, and an oxygen mask. It's time to go, Kent said, and I wriggled into the tail of the plane and checked my gun. Soon, we were off to Germany. And while I watched for enemy fighters, I prayed some more. 
500 bombers and 900 fighter planes took off from England that day. And the Germans sent 400 fighter planes to stop us. It was the biggest air battle of World War II. Many planes were lost. My plane was one of them. Bullets from a German plane struck an engine, and it began to smoke, and soon two more engines were hit. I was scared, but I kept firing my gun. And suddenly, there was a loud crash, and my compartment filled with smoke. I looked at my leg, and blood covered my pants. I'm shot, I yelled. Bill and Ed pulled me out of the tail. Am I gonna die, I wondered. The plane is going down, the pilot told our crew. We've got to jump. Bill and Virgil tried to help me put on my parachute, but it came undone. There's only one thing we can do, Bill said. While I held the parachute in my arms, he and Virgil tossed me from the plane. They prayed the parachute would open. You can be sure I did too. It did. As I fell to earth, everything became quiet. The boot slipped off my foot. The ground rose awful quick, and I landed in enemy territory. German soldiers came running and pointed their guns at me. I was too hurt to do anything but surrender. I was a prisoner. The soldiers took my gun, my watch, and my graduation ring. And worst of all, they took my photo of Anne. Because I was bleeding and couldn't walk, the Germans took me to a prisoner's hospital. A dark, dirty place that was nothing like the hospitals back home. You must have surgery or you'll die, a doctor told me. Am I going to lose my leg, I wondered. I don't know how long the surgery lasted. But when I awoke, the first thing I did was reach under the covers. My leg's still there, I hollered. Did you ever wake up worried a leg was gone? It's mighty scary. I was relieved and prayed my thanks to God, but I was still a prisoner, and the hospital was a terrible place. The beds were hard, and the sheets were dirty, and there was dirt and grime all over. Some of the prisoners died, but I didn't. By and by, I began to feel better and could walk some. You don't need a hospital now, a German told me one day. And they put me on a train, and I was off to a prison camp. Let me tell you, prison camp ain't summer camp. It was so bad, I missed the hospital. I was most always cold, and the Germans didn't give us much to eat either. For dinner, I would get a piece of bread, some shrivelly vegetables, a dried potato that I had to share with a worm, and coffee made from acorns. I was always hungry. The lice and fleas and bed bugs that squirmed in my socks and pants and bed sure weren't hungry. They had me to feed on. Before long, I was covered with sores and I lost a lot of weight and grew a scraggly beard. If Van could only see me now, I laughed. The camp was horrible and many prisoners died. Those were the worst days of my life. The Germans allowed us to have church services, though. And that made all the difference. I never forgot God. Please get me out of here, I'd pray. I want to see Anne and my family. I miss them so much. God answered my prayers. One morning, I heard a loud boom and a crash and a rumble, and I could feel the ground shake. Now what, I wondered, and rushed outside to the most beautiful sight I'd ever seen, except for Anne. The Americans had reached the camp. Now the Germans were the prisoners, and I was free. The war ended soon after, and I returned to America. I was mighty glad. I'd done my duty, and we'd won the war, and I'd had enough adventure. I made it home several days later. My family rushed onto the porch, crying and laughing and kissing and squeezing me till I was most smothered with love. It felt so good to be home. And that night I called Ann. I'd missed her so much. Let's go to a baseball game tomorrow, I said. And during that game, I asked Ann to be my wife. And we were married the next year. Wars ain't fun, no sir. I'd seen friends die. I'd almost died myself. 
I'd been shot and thrown from a plane and captured and starved and nearly eaten alive by bugs. I still walk with a limp. Some folks would grumble, not me. I've had an awful good life. I love my family, and I love my country, and most importantly, I love my God. Let me tell you something, and you remember this. Nothing else matters. Well, I'm Frank Kravitz, World War II veteran, and that's my story. After 68 years of marriage, Frank's beloved Anne died on March 31, 2015. And then, only four months later, Frank died too. He was 91. Frank's character has inspired his children, his grandchildren, and his many friends to live better, richer lives. Frank's character should inspire us too. He wasn't rich or famous. He wasn't a singer or a movie star or an athlete. He was an ordinary boy who grew up to do great things. He was Frank Kravitz, an American hero. And I'm Amos Hastings, and I thank you for watching. <laughs>